Hello and welcome. In this video we are taking a look at time series momentum. We are coding a simple time series momentum strategy in Python and play a bit around with different asset classes such as stocks, cryptos and forex. As you might know I already covered cross-sectional momentum in some of our videos. I will link them in the description. Cross-sectional momentum as a recap was comparing the performance of stocks relative to other stocks and buys respectively sells the top respectively worst performers. Time series momentum focuses only on the own past return of a particular asset. If that return is positive, the asset is bought. If it's negative, the asset will be sold. That being said, let's get into action. Before we are starting, as a disclaimer, this video is not an investment advice and is for informational and education purposes only. Alright, so let's get started. As you see, I already imported some necessary libraries. We need pandas for data handling, while finance to get asset prices from the internet, and NumPy for calculation purposes. First of all, let's pull some stock price data. So we are starting with Apple, and we are starting just roughly one year back. So in the beginning of August 2020. And we are ending up with this data frame containing price information on the Apple stock, right? Now, let's create a function where we are applying the strategy I just explained. So I'm just calling this function strategy and this function is taking a data frame as an argument. So the data frame you just saw, for example, and it's also taking a window argument. And this window argument is just accounting for the days we want to calculate back, right? So if this is a one, we just want to take the prior day return. If this is a two, we are taking the sum of the prior two days uh, returns, right? So first of all, we want to create a copy of the data frame generated outside this function. And then we want to calculate log returns. So I'm just calling them returns, but these are log returns. Therefore, I'm using the NumPy module, take the log function and provide the close price as an argument, but not only the absolute price, but the relative price change uh, in relation to the prior day. So this is the percentage change function. And I have to add a one afterwards. So again, this is just calculating log returns. Now, the next one will be prior n. And this is just accounting for the days we are going back, right? So if we have a one here, this is exactly the same as this one here, right? But if we have a two here, we are taking the prior two days returns here, right? So how can we achieve that? We're just rolling over the return column here. So we are using the F red, then rolling and provide the window, which is an argument uh, of this function as an argument for the rolling function here, right? And then we're just taking the sum and we can only take the sum because these are log returns and log returns are time additive. All right, so as we are getting some NAN values by that, I'm just dropping them and provide in place true. This is just dropping all uh, NAN values from the data frame DF. All right, now I want to define my position. So when I am uh, long the stock or short the stock, just calling that position. And we are using a list comprehension to achieve that. So we are taking one if i is larger than zero. So i is every element in this return series prior n, which is again, the exact same thing as the return uh, column, right? So I'm only looping over that to make it possible that I can also take two, three, four, five, 100 days and so on, right? And again, this I is just the prior and day or days return. So I should get one here in my position if this return is positive. And I should get a minus one here if this return is negative for i in 
and, and again I'm looping over this prior n column. Right? So 1 for prior positive returns and minus 1 for prior negative returns. Now let us define our strategy. I'm just calling that column strat. And our strategy is just our position column times the return column. We also have to shift the position column by one row to account for the fact that we can only buy on the next day, right? Otherwise we would have a forward looking bias here. So we are using the position column shifted by one and then multiply that with the return column. So again, to make this more clear, if this is a one on the prior day, we would get the actual return on day at t zero, right? So we're just getting one times the return on that day. But if the prior day return was negative, we would get minus the return on the next day as we would be long if this would be a one, right? So contrary, if this would be a minus one, we will profit on a loss the next day, right? And yeah, finally, we just have to return something out of the function. And well, you could create a data frame out of that. I'm just creating a chart out of that. Before that, we have to yeah, uh, transform the log returns into actual returns. And therefore we are using the counter function of the log function, then provide both the return and the uh, strategy return. Now we need two brackets here. And then we are taking the cumulative sum. So why the cumulative sum and not just the sum? So if we would take the sum, we're just getting the overall uh, strategy return and return of the asset in general. But we want to have a time series, right? To, to, yeah, to visualize it into a, into a um, line chart. So then we are plotting the series and we are defining a figure size. Um, 12, 6 should be sufficient. All right. And that's our strategy. And now let's take a look at the strategy. And we are providing our Apple data frame. And we're just keeping the window at one here. So let's take a look at that. We are ending up with a chart like this. Right. And as you see, the return of the asset is way better than the strategy return. So doesn't work on Apple as it seems, or at least with the parameters we've provided here, right? So if we're taking a look at, I don't know, two days, so we're getting the prior two day return, then yeah, we, we got some, some um, good points in time, right? But in general, if we are considering the whole time period, the asset is performing way better than the strategy. So, I mean, you can pass a lot of parameters here, right? 100 days and take a look at that. But obviously on Apple, the strategy is not a good idea, at least as said with the parameters we are using. All right, so um, yeah, let's take a look at some other assets. Right, so let's take a look at Bitcoin. Um, start with one day. You see Bitcoin price or Bitcoin returns way better than using the strategy. Let's take a longer time horizon. You see strategy is outperforming the asset. Let's take a look at 50 days. Also closely, slightly better. But yeah, play a bit around with that for yourself, right? So you see it's very sensitive regarding the parameters, the input uh, you're providing. And also 
dependent on the asset you're providing. So let's take a look at some more. So fancy stocks, AMC. Uh, by the way, without that being a financial advice, I wouldn't trade those stocks probably. Um, so this is working very, very good, even with a one day window. Let's take a look at a longer time horizon. Oh, let's take two. Also good. Three. Very good. Ten. Uh, and now it's getting worse here, right? So probably an even longer time period. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Okay, yeah, but I will play around with that for myself, so I don't wanna bore you here. Um, let's take a look at GME, GameStops. GameStops, yeah, GameStop. Um, yeah, asset is performing better, taking a one day period five days also as as it better three ba days strategy way better as you see very sensitive uh, with those very very high volatility stocks okay but anyhow uh, last asset class let's take a look at at uh, forex per euro us dollar this is just the uh, ticker symbol for the euro us dollar so one day first yeah um, currency pair is performing better than the strategy how oh, can we take 10 oh, sorry 10 days uh, close close <coughs> and 15 days we're getting better strategy return right so yeah last but not least uh, i want to try out the strategy on intraday um, charts right so reason behind that is i actually want to apply the strategy to real trading with uh, cryptocurrencies so um yeah first of all i want to see if that's a yeah if that's that's a thing in, in intraday uh, charts so let's do that so let's name that intraday. And if this is working, or if this is this seems to work, uh, yeah, we will we will apply that on cryptocurrency trading on the Binance platform. So let's start with <coughs> Bitcoin. Uh, we are just starting some days back here. Uh, let's start Monday this week. And we're taking one minute time intervals. So important now is if we're taking one minute uh, time intervals, we are uh, taking a look at the prior minute return, right? The prior two minute uh, return, the prior three minute returns and so on, right? So I'm just creating a data frame here. And now we can just call our function from above, provide the df1 and yeah it seems like the strategy is working out really good so of course yeah you have to account for trading fees that is why i think it would be interesting to apply that in real trading uh, let's take a look at five steps yeah it's also working out pretty nicely but i want to check for one thing uh, because I won't be able to short the asset. So you can short on, on Binance, but I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm using spot trading here. So um, if you want to avoid the shorting possibility, you just can amend this else minus one here. So you're just getting zero. You're just not getting any return out of that, right? So again, this amendment is just accounting for the fact that I cannot short the asset. So let's take a look at the interday thing again. First of all, one minute time steps. Yeah, it's still working. Uh, five minutes also working. Yeah, I have, have to do some more um, back testing to see what time steps we can trade. 
Let's take a look at Ethereum. Uh, also seems to work. So it seems to be a thing in intraday trading. But we have to, uh, yeah, we have to actually try it out on the Binance platform. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Leave it a like if you enjoyed the video or could extract value out of it. And I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye bye.